Happy Tuesday out there, Team 42. It's your skipper here, Darius Delta, present our Macro Minute for Tuesday, August 27th, 2024. As always, we'll start with the executive summary from today's lead off morning note. If you would like to review the analysis supporting these conclusions, as well as what specific changes you need to make in your portfolio to remain on the right side of market risk, you need to be a client of 42 Macro. So today's key macro questions are, will U.S. consumers react confidently to rate cuts? Will leading home price data continue to signal above trend inflation? And should investors buy mega cap tech ahead of NVIDIA earnings on Wednesday? Our answers are, today's August Conference Board Consumer Confidence Report will be a good barometer of how consumers are feeling about the recent softness in the labor market and may contain valuable insights ahead of Friday's July PC report. Leading home price index data continues to suggest we are approaching the end of the lagged good news in shelter CPI and the housing PC deflator. As such, Q4 could be bumpy from an inflation signaling perspective. If not Q4, then more than likely 1Q 2025. Investors that have not participated in this bull market like 42 macro clients did are excited about a potential rotation into small caps and cyclicals, a catch-up trade, if you will. Uh, if that occurs, it will be among the very few times in my career the stock market broadened out with the largest cap companies leading a decline. The October 2020 correction was one of the most salient examples of this dynamic. This is not October 2020 from a forward-looking growth, inflation, liquidity, and positioning cycle perspective. Buyer beware on small caps and cyclicals for now, especially if you are a professional investor running hedge for the portfolios and from an underweight, overweight perspective. So transitioning to our uh, 42 Macro Dashboard here, as always, we'll wrap up with the question from our community. This one's uh, titled Reason to Worry. It says, uh, hello, Darius. I'm probably not the only European or any non-U.S. investor uh, who for the past couple of years has had a solid chunk of assets in U.S. dollar short-term floating rate bonds. Uh, that chunk is now trapped in a 4 to 6% hold due to the sharp dollar slide, and that's all fine. It's all safe in the grand scheme of things, but all those short govies are now stuck. Uh, what used to be cash of Colons is now buttoned up. Assuming this is a sizable global phenomenon at the moment, does it pose a risk to stocks as all that cash isn't there to pick the bottoms? Uh, that's a phenomenal question. And I think what this investor is describing uh, is the sort of uh, the, the first, the fundamental reason why the dollar has historically been uh, so inversely correlated uh, to global liquidity. Uh, recall that you know global liquidity, if you think about this from the perspective of cross-border financing, there are a collection of uh, countries rather that are net international investment surplus countries, and there are a collection of economies that are net international investment deficit countries. Obviously, generally speaking, the capital exporting nations are generally exporting uh, their excess liquidity vis-a-vis -vis excess household savings or excess corporate profits uh, or excess budget deficits uh, into uh, the economies, or sorry, not excess budget deficits, that's the other way around. That's their excess capital savings and excess household uh, savings uh, into economies that have you know, excess budget deficits or a uh, general uh, a net negative investment position, a hole that needs to be filled because they're either over consuming uh, from a consumer standpoint or they are uh, over consuming from a government uh, standpoint. And so that's kind of how, generally how the world works. So whenever you have a strong dollar, uh, what tends to happen is you you have you, you it tightens financial conditions globally for two reasons. One, the currencies of the capital exporting nations decline, so they are unable to export as much capital to the economies uh, uh, that need the capital. And number two, because the dollar is the world's reserve currency and the uh, the lion's share of international cross-border uh, bank lending and international debt security issuance is denominated in dollars, when the dollar is rising, you also have a depressing impact on the demand for incremental leverage uh, for the net international investment uh, deficit economy. So this is definitely something uh, that uh, can, can, this is definitely something that to pay attention to, but just generally from the perspective of, you know, uh, the global liquidity, uh, it usually is a good thing that the dollar is declining because ultimately it means is that the uh, currencies of the capital exporting uh, economies uh, can export more capital, albeit you know perhaps a slightly less transaction, uh, slightly lower transaction to the extent that those uh, securities, those debt securities, are underwater in price. But generally speaking, and you know the, this is sort of a retail investor phenomenon. What happens in the institutional space is that those securities are held to maturity and they get their par back. And so ultimately, they just wind up with more money uh, once things like T-bills or floating rate treasury securities uh, come um, uh, once they once they uh, get redeemed by, by the treasury. So uh, just be aware of that. You know, it's somewhat complicated stuff, but for obvious reasons, you know, we we uh, report on, you know, kind of the broad trends and the broad outlook for global liquidity from a simple simplistic standpoint. 
uh, for our clients according to macro, but obviously we you know should display and, and 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 report on all the moving parts that help them understand these dynamics at a more deeper level because uh, I think it's really important to understand this stuff uh, at a more deeper level. So uh, definitely check out our global liquidity monitor uh, and our research and our monthly macro scouting reports uh, if you like uh, more understanding and insight on how global liquidity actually works, how those flows work, uh, how to predict those flows. Uh, because those, obviously it's not just enough to know the trend, the current trend. You need to know uh, where liquidity is headed. And I think we do that uh, as well, if not, as, it certainly is top five, if not top three uh, in the world in terms of uh, in terms of the folks that I have a lot of respect for on um, this particular subject matter. So we'll wrap it up there. Uh, Darius Dell presenting our Macro Minute for Tuesday, August 27th, 2024. Uh, everyone have a wonderful day. Best of luck. And we will catch you back here next week. I'm going to be on vacation for the rest of the week with my family. So I'm looking forward to that. So we'll catch back here, uh, clients. We'll see you back here uh, Saturday for the Around the Horn. So have a great week and uh, everyone enjoy the rest of their summer. It's going to be uh, September real soon here and it's going to be football season real soon. So you know we're all pumped about that. So uh, everyone have a great day. Cheers.